Hello everyone, George here, and we are back inside of OpenCV for Python. In this video, we're gonna take a look at NumPy because it's pretty much what OpenCV is dependent upon. NumPy is a great series of libraries that allow us to do all kinds of array operations and matrix operations very quickly and efficiently. So when you work with that entire framework within OpenCV, great things can happen, fast things can happen, optimized things can happen. But that being said, it's also important that we understand some of the differences between uh, what OpenCV provides or what NumPy provides, because there is some overlap in different functions and features. And even though they might be called the same thing, they might operate differently, such as when you're dealing with things like adding two different images together. But anyway, why don't we go ahead and start up our environment? So I'm in Anaconda Navigator, open CV, hit run, open terminal, and then I'm just gonna type spider as usual. Okay, so here we have a new blank document. And what we're gonna do is import in, import CV2 as usual. And then we're gonna do import numpy as np, so our life is a little bit easier when we're typing. The first thing we should do is let's just work with normal images. I'm gonna go ahead and save this document out. Let's go to my desktop where I already have our prior folder from the other videos. I'm just gonna save that in here where I have a prior image. So let's go ahead and just call this uh, temp and uh, basic ops, enter. And now I'm gonna load in an image that I have inside of that folder. So let's do image is gonna be equal to cv2.imread. And then all we need to do now is pass in the name of it. Mine is named 0.png to make my life easy. And I wanna bring that in as a, let's see, cv2.imread. And I'm just gonna say any color, let it be whatever it happens to be. Great, now we can start working with this image in a couple different ways. First of all, if you wanna access um, individual pixel information, there's two ways we can go about it. We can do it using uh, you know, something similar to how you would index into arrays, or you can use the more efficient and faster way, which is using the dot item method. So let's take a look at both of them real quick. So if we do image and we want to access zero comma zero, what this is gonna do is go to the first row, first column, let's make this bigger. It's gonna do the first row and first column and return to us that value. So let's go ahead and print that value out. So we'll do print and image zero, zero. So let's go ahead and hit run and we get the triplet here, that is 61, 57, and 56, the blue, green, and red value. Remember, uh, OpenCV is backwards, not RGB, but BGR instead. But anyway, if we wanted to access one element of these, that is the green, red, or blue channel, what we can do is put in another dimension. So zero is our row, column, and then finally the uh, channel. So let's do, if we wanted the green channel, we'll put in a one there and hit run. And that is 57, our green channel. And if we want our blue channel, it would be a zero. And likewise, if we wanted our red channel, that would be a two. Okay, so that's grabbing information. Now, OpenCV recommends that the more efficient way to grab information uh, when you're dealing with individual pixels is to use the dot item method. So instead of this, we would do image dot item, and then you would specify in the same way using a tuple exactly which one you want. So let's do zero comma zero comma zero for our blue channel and hit run and you'll see we get the same value of 61. Once again, this is for speed and efficiency. If you don't care about that, then you can do it using the other way I just showed, but if you are doing a lot of iteration over individual pixels, which is really not recommended in OpenCV because it's, well, that is NumPy is optimized to be done over large arrays of pixel data, not individual ones, um, you would wanna use this. Now, similarly, if you wanted to set the data, what we wanna do instead is, Let's go ahead and do image, and then we can index back in once again. So we'll do zero comma zero in our first pixel, and we already saw what that equals, right? So if we did print, run, we have 61, 57, 56. If we wanted to make that black, we could just set that equal to zero comma zero comma zero, and hit run instead. Now if we wanted to make this equal to black instead, all we need to do is do equals the tuple zero comma zero comma zero, and we'll do print image and then zero comma zero. Just like before, hit run. And what we have of course is the value zero 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 right there that we get back. Once again, there's a faster way that's recommended to do this instead of actually indexing in using this, 
we'd call the method item set. So dot item set, and then we pass in our tuple, which is 000 for our location, and then our value. So in this case, let's say I'm replacing the blue channel with a value of zero, because I want to get rid of it. And let's go ahead and hit run. And what you'll notice now over here is that my blue value is zero. Okay, so those are easy ways of indexing in and changing things, uh, both inefficiently and efficiently. What other sorts of things do we need to know? Well, the next thing is, what kind of data are we dealing with? Uh, many times you will be creating your own matrices, or that is your own images, and sometimes those images will be composed of floating point numbers. Other times they're going to be composed of, especially if you're loading them in using CV to IM read, they're going to be made out of integer values. So let's go ahead and see what kind of information is being stored inside of this NumPy array. So instead of doing print and 00, zero we're going to do image dot data or D type. And we'll hit print, and hit run, and we get an unsigned int of size eight. There are lots of different types that we can actually work with. They're all pretty much here for us to take a look at. Let's do, um, let's see, temp is going to be equal to NP dot array. And then inside of this, we get to specify the data type. So D type is going to be equal to NP dot, and we can do float, and you can see we can have a 16, 32, 64 bit float stored. Or we can do NP dot int, and then we have a 16, 32, 64, or eight size integer for that particular element. Now, eight is good if you're dealing with grayscale. If you're dealing with an alpha channel, you might want an int 32 for each particular element. It really depends on what kind of data you're storing and working with. But you always want to make sure you know what you're dealing with because when you start adding arrays together or doing uh, manipulations of it, if you don't know what data is in there, you could really screw things up. Now the next thing for us to take a look at is actually slicing through an image. And that is not dealing with individual pixel values, but instead taking larger ranges of them. And this is pretty easy. It's very similar to how slicing works uh, normally with arrays. So let's go ahead and do something like that. Let's delete a few lines here. We'll keep the image though. And let's just do our slice is going to be equal to a part of our image. And we're gonna say that we want to go from, I don't know, row, zero to row 50, and then we wanna go from column row to column 50. So we're grabbing what the upper left-hand corner of our particular image as a slice. So now that we have a slice, why don't we go ahead and visualize that using, uh, let's create a window. So cv 2named window, and then we're gonna call this, let's see, uh, temp or original, I guess. And we can do cv 2window and let's just choose auto size. Then we can do I am show and do our original image and then our wait key. Oops, always good to put CV2 at the beginning. CV2 dot I am show image and then CV2 dot wait key. And let's go ahead and we'll do the original image and then we'll do CV2 dot I am show and then we're going to show the new one, temp1 and then cv2 dot wait key after we press the key. Okay, let's go ahead and hit run. Whoops, forgot the name. So let's go ahead and type in our original. That would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? To actually include the name of the window you want it to be part of. And let's go ahead and hit run now. There we go, I'm gonna hit a key. And there we can see it resizes to just show the uh, upper 50 by 50. But there it is. After I refresh it, you can see it right there, the 50 by 50 block. Great. And it looks like I clicked it too many times, so we're gonna get it repeated several times. There we go, there we go. Now let's make a bigger section of that instead. Let's do, I don't know, the first 250 by 250. And I wanna make sure I actually include all of the different colors, all the channels, so I'm gonna make sure I include this colon over here. Let's go ahead and close it. And you can see now there actually is color in the images I just showed. So if we do just want that first channel, we can go ahead and put a zero in. And we can see now we just have the blue channel. So finally, the last thing we're gonna look at really quick is generating our own data using NumPy. This is preferable in a lot of instances and cases where we don't wanna work with actual image files, but instead we wanna create our own procedural content. And there are about five different methods that we really should keep in the back of our heads for when we're do doing things like this. Let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, image line. And temp is gonna end up getting replaced with, let's see, let's get rid of this line and this line. So we're just gonna be displaying temp. 
and let's do numpy dot, and the first one is zeros, which does exactly what you expect it to. It's going to take in the shape of it, which is how many rows and columns you want. So let's just do 200 by 200, something like that. And the idea here is, well, how many zeros do you want? Uh, 200 by 200 in this case. We can also specify the data type, D, uh, D type is equal to np.float32. Let's go ahead and hit run, and we can see we get a nice large black image. Now if we do ones, we're gonna get something a little bit more interesting now. Because it's the float 32, and uh, the value is one, you might think, oh, well, don't our values need to be between zero and 255? Well, no, when dealing with floating point values, our range is between zero and one. So if I hit run right now, we get a white image instead. Now, the final one we're gonna look at real quick is if you wanna create uh, an image of a bunch of random information. So that's numpy random, pretty self-explanatory, dot random, or dot rand, now for random, all we need to do is specify one thing, and that is the number of rows and the number of columns. Much simpler than the other ones we just looked at, and hit run, and there we go. We get a noisy image that we can work with. Now this pretty much summarizes the basic stuff you need to know about NumPy arrays. There's a heck of a lot more, and you can read about much more in the documentation on it. We're gonna learn a lot more as we go along, as we run into different examples of working inside of OpenCV using Python. So don't worry, uh, just get these basics down and you'll learn a lot more as we go. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Thanks, goodbye.